We will now discuss setting up your vaccine data logger. Open Dixonware by double clicking on the icon. To change the unit of measure for your temperature reading, choose File, Preferences, a dialog box will appear. Click on Fahrenheit or Celsius for your preference and temperature readings on the downloaded data. Then choose OK. To begin setting up your logger, in the upper left hand corner of the software, choose Setup. Choose either USB or serial as your cable connection. Then choose Continue. The setup window pops up with six tabs. Automatically, it opens to the identification tab. All the fields on this screen will populate with information about this logger. These include the hardware model number, serial number, calibration date, and factory calibration date. This confirms that Dixonware has recognized the logger. Should all fields remain blank, refer to no communication in the troubleshooting section of this manual. Choose the setup button for calibration date and change it to a date two years from when you are setting up this logger. Then hit OK. Choose the setup button for the calibration interval. Change it to 24 months. Then click OK. Choose the samples tab. This tab explains information on how your unit takes temperature sample readings. The first section shows the current date and time. This section is the sample interval. These units are preset at five minute intervals. The next section is the sub 10 second interval. It is disabled and unavailable on this unit. Next is the stop or wrap when full section. The default on these loggers is set to wrap. Once the logger becomes full, new data will rewrite over old data. Put a process in place that allows you to download the temperature data in consistent intervals so that you don't lose any temperature readings. The next section is the samples per channel. This logger currently has zero recorded points. The next section is the amount of logged time. This current unit has zero recorded periods of time. Finally, the battery level shows the amount of battery life currently available. Blue bars indicate the strength of the battery life. The troubleshooting section explains some ways to achieve longer battery life. Choose the channels tab. Each vaccine data logger has two channels which read as follows. For the VFC325, channel 1 is the freezer temperature. Channel 2 is the refrigerator temperature. For the VFC320, Channel 1 is the external probe. Channel 2 is the ambient temperature where the logger is placed. Choose the Channel 1 Temp Alarm tab. To set the min and max alarm conditions for this channel, do as follows. For the VFC325, the alarm defaults are minimum temperature, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Maximum temperature, 6 degrees Fahrenheit. To make any changes, type in a different temperature into the box and click Update.
choose the channel 2 temp alarm tab to set the min and max alarm conditions for channel 2. For the VFC325, the alarm defaults are minimum temperature 34 degrees Fahrenheit, maximum temperature 47 degrees Fahrenheit. As channel 1, to make any changes, type in a different temperature and click update. Caution, the preset alarm temperatures that you are setting are lower than the ambient air temperature. Therefore, when the alarms are enabled, they will sound. Do the following, silencing the audible alarm, press the alarm button on the front of the unit to silence the alarm. To disable the visual alarm, press the alarm button until CLR appears on the display. ALRN will continue to display until the logger and probes have been positioned in the refrigerator and or freezer. Choose alarms tab to set the alarm temperatures. There are two alarm indicators, ALRN, which flashes on the display, and audible alarm buzzers. To display ALRN across the front of the display, if the temperatures go out of range, click in Alarm Enable. An audible alarm, if temperatures go out of range, click in Buzzer Enable. In Delay, type in the number of minutes that you want to delay an alarm notification. For example, setting a 30 minute delay means that if the unit senses an out of range temperature, no alarm will sound or display. Holding the alarm button down for five seconds will reset the alarm for the duration of the delay period. If the out of range temperature still exists, at the end of the delay period, the alarm will sound again. Click Update to save all of your changes. To disable, to disable one or both of these alarms, click on the check mark to remove and choose Update. The words Setup Data Refreshed will appear when completed. The logger is now sampling and ready for use. Remove the cable from your PC and the logger. A delta or triangle symbol will appear on the display to confirm that the unit is logging. The logger will log ambient temperatures until you position the probes inside the refrigerator or freezer. Account for this movement when evaluating your downloaded data.